Hello, my name is Manal Faragalla and this is my COVID story. Um, I was diagnosed with um, coronavirus on March 24th and um, I was transferred by ambulance from the doctor's office straight to the Valley Hospital where I stayed like uh, they just uh, put me on a uh, ventilator right away for the first three weeks but on the third day or the fourth day they tested me to see if how my response is weak when they lowered my uh, when they lowered the sedation and uh, it happened one of my doctors one of the doctors who were following like were were like uh, like just with me on the on, on this journey was one of my sister's very good friends and she's a christian uh she she said to my sister like when we re lowered the sedation she was fighting us and uh, this means she's a fighter and she's going to make it and she's a christian so, so she decided to put the verses of psalm 91 verses 14 and 15 and these verses let me read them to you um okay because he holds fast to me in love i will deliver him i will protect him because he knows my name when he calls to me i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will rescue him and honor him with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation she put these verses and framed them and put them on top of my bed and she claimed these verses and she decided to go in and out of the room praying for me all the time when i was even not realizing who comes in nothing i was i wasn't feeling anything i was totally out but three weeks later when they put me off sedation they decided to test me to see like uh, if i am alert if i'm going to be able to answer any questions and I, they asked me where we are. I said in the Valley Hospital, what years are we in? It's 2020. And um, a few other questions. What's your first name, your last name? And all these things. And I answered everything. And the, but the thing is, I, was, uh, I didn't have a voice. When they put you on ventilator, your voice is gone. So it was all just trying to, to say, to mouthing. And, um, but they understood that I am understanding the questions and answering. So I looked at the, at the nurse and kind of questioning, why are you asking me these questions? Because she said to me, because all the people on the floor, on, on the ICU, in the ICU, none of them who, who are like coronavirus patients, none of them is responsive. And none of them is alert, you're the only one. And I felt, praise you, Lord. You are the one who protected my brain and I still am able to answer questions and I'm alert. I started praising him and thanking him because I understood. So um, then later, I started to have difficulty breathing even when I was on ventilator. And I had a feeding, the feeding tube on one side of my nose, on one, one of my nose, in one of my nostrils. And the other side, I needed to breathe through it. So it was so hard to breathe. And when I was struggling to breathe and I felt my heart would stop at one point because it's so hard to try to get air into your lungs. So I said, Lord, help me. What? You said you're going to be with me. And you said you are with me. And I know. But can you show me that you are with me? And it was in the middle of the night and most of my days there until the end i wasn't sleeping because it was so like uncomfortable the bed is uncomfortable the room people in and out like the medical staff and the machines are beeping non-stop the regular beeping and then when something goes wrong it beeps in a crazy way so i wasn't comfortable even like to to, to, to just when I, when I try to, to close my eyes and I try to ask them, help me to sleep, help me to sleep. They say, we gave you all the Valium and all the, everything to help you 
and the, just close your eyes and try to sleep and I couldn't and my my because I, I when I was sedated I tried to push to pull the tubes and all these things they decided to time both arms to the bed so I am just laying down my arms are tied to the bed and I'm totally uncomfortable and I'm crying out to God and I'm saying and he kept telling me just pray just pray focus on me and and he started asking me to um, pray for people who come in and out of the room pray for other patients in the other rooms and I started to do that because I'm always like God had trained me all my life through difficulties so when you you when you're going through difficulties or in general don't focus on yourself and try to pray for others and my calling is to pray for others so I pray for others I feel joy and I feel I'm out of my I'm not focusing on myself so that's a great thing and I'm used to it so I started to do that even in the hospital room in the middle of my difficulty and and when you don't breathe it's such a terrible feeling and you can't breathe and you feel what is it and then the enemy started to come and play his games give up and die I said no right away I felt lifted up and this I understand it was because of all the prayer warriors who were praying for me I had the strength to just push him away and very quick usually even in your regular life when the enemy comes with his lies we don't like we try to push him away push him away it's not always easy to get him out of your mind or, or to get him out of the picture but this time, because of God's grace and all the prayers, I was able to tell him no. Because I knew it wasn't my time yet to go to heaven. I know when I go, I'll go to heaven and be with Jesus. And this is what I, I'm longing for. But it wasn't my time yet because before, like before I went to the hospital in, in the last few years, as I'm praying and, and, and meditating and reading the Bible and listening to worship songs, I say, God, I love it. I feel I'm in heaven and I, I, just, I just want to be with you. And he doesn't answer and then I enjoy being with him. I'm, I'm so encouraged. And then I go back to my normal life. I, I say, oh God, it's so much different being in your presence and being in, in my regular life. So I kept saying that, saying that. And then one day the Lord spoke to me through the book of Job the last verse in the book of Job, when he said, and Job died having full life and long years. So God spoke to me and said, you still have a few years, like you still have a long life and you're not there yet. So you have a mission and you have to, so don't tell me that this again, just enjoy my presence and be in my presence and do whatever I tell you to do. And don't think about going to heaven now because it's not your time yet so this thing was already taken care of so when the enemy came to me it was much easier to push him away and for him to flee from me and my heart was always praying at the hospital so it was so like i can't say i i was enjoying but i i kind of was kind of isolated from this environment of of then like tense environment and and the, the 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 nurses going in and out and the doctors and different kind of therapists it's all and i am in a glass room so everyone is seeing me and i'm seeing everyone so i can see the whole way and all the lights were on even in the middle of the night and as i told god i cried out to him and i said you are with me and i want to see that i know you are with me but i want to see it so the Lord showed me himself. The first thing I saw, and it was far in the hallway, not that close, not in my room, but far in the hallway. He showed me Jesus, the good shepherd. I looked, I was amazed. And then he showed me Jesus, the crucified on the cross. And it, he looked in a very bad shape. And then I saw Jesus, the king, and he was wearing white with a golden sash and a golden crown, a huge golden crown. 
And then I closed my eyes. I didn't see this, this vision. And I opened my eyes. I see it again. And then I turned my head to the side because I see it in front of me. I turn my head to the side. I don't see it. And I open my eyes. I look there. And I'm trying to make sure it was in the middle of the night. No one was there. Nurses were in the nurse station. All the employees who come and go all day. It's a busy hallway going and coming. Nobody was there. So I, I was testing because I wanted to know if I'm imagining. And no, I wasn't. And nothing. And I said, is it kind of something on the, on the walls, anything? And I looked, I looked. I kept looking and it was for a long time. The same three images and they kept, they kept appearing next to each other then. then. So I said, yes, you are with me. I know, but this is proof. And then I told him, so what is it that I'm going through? I'm saying to him, I'm questioning just to understand. And you know my heart. I don't propose whatever happens to me because I know it's your will. But I want to just understand. He said to me, you saw me crucified? I said, yes. He said, you always tell me you love me. And I answer you back and I say, I love you more. And then he said, do you understand now how I love you more? I showed you my, the cross for you to see the pain I went through because I love you, to save you from your sins. And now you are experiencing a very slight pain compared to the pain I went through. So now you understand why you're going through this? I said, I understand and I thank you. As long as you showed me that you are with me, help me, help me to be able to go through this. And I know I will because you are with me. And then as the days go by, I keep seeing another vision. And I'm saying visions because I wasn't sleeping and I was having such a hard time. I didn't sleep maybe sometimes i slept from being exhausted but it was for a very short time because i know because i felt always exhausted exhausted because i couldn't sleep anyway so the vision the other vision i saw and he kept showing me this next vision multiple times it was jesus wearing white and 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 um, burgundy and he was in a boat and the boat was in a very clear lake and the lake was very calm and peaceful. And I was with him in the boat, but I wasn't the, the, the mature, like, old person I am. But I was the three or four year old, year old girl who was sitting with Jesus in the boat. And the boat was very small. Just room for me and him and just another, like, part in it. Like, so it was just for me and him. And he was smiling at me and just playing with me like anybody who is loving a child and playing with this child in a very kind way and as i see this vision and i can't kind of feel going in this boat with jesus such a tremendous peace fills me from top to bottom and i feel again i am not in this icu room that can depress anybody so I said, I always say, thank you, Lord. And I start to pray and pray as he told me, pray, pray, pray. So I would be distracted also from focusing on my pain and focusing on the busyness around me and the people going in and out and all the poking and, and no, your, 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 your arms are not tight enough. We have to tighten it more because we, we don't want you to touch anything. And always like, so then i don't i didn't know I, I i know that i wasn't breathing i wasn't able to breathe but i don't know how hard like what is my situation exactly and then i had this other vision jesus coming having a silver tray and it's a tray a big one and it has white oval shaped uh, things lined lined up on this silver tray and i said to him jesus what is this 
He said, these are new lungs and you need to take two. I said, okay. And I woke up from this vision. So then this was around Easter, but I didn't realize the time because I'm in a room, I have nothing and I refused to open the TV, I turned on the TV and the nurses kept telling me and begging me, please turn on the TV. We can turn it on for you, be distracted. This w and I refused, I watched it only once and I felt, no, don't waste your time on TV, just keep praying. So I was there praying and just having nothing and didn't know the days, the time. So one, like one day after this vision of the lungs, one of the nurses who were very sweet, like she was very sweet. And she came to me and said, it was at night. She was the night shift nurse. She said to me, do you know what today is? I said, no. She said, today is Easter Sunday. And I still wasn't talking. I, I wasn't talking until I left the, F, the ICU 36 uh, days after 36 days. So I wasn't talking and they tried, when I tried to talk to them or try to answer them back, sometimes they don't understand. So they tried to give me a pen and a paper and I tried to write. My hands were so shaky from all the medications I was on. So it, it wasn't... The, the writing was so bad, so they decided to give me kind of a frame with, um, with um, uh, all the letters and photos and uh, the numbers. So they tell me, you like point at the, the, the photos to tell us what you want or what you need. And if, if the photo is not there, if, it, if it's not like, if it's not, the thing you want you can write down whatever you want and we will follow your finger as you go on one letter after the other and we can understand that and we will tell you what it is and, and we, we confirm with you so then at, on this day when she said do you know what the, the day is I said I wrote like I started to write down and I said no she said this is Easter Sunday I said really can I write I, 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 I told her Give me a, a pen and, and a paper. And she gave it, she gave it to me and, and I wrote down, and I didn't know if she was a Christian or not, but I decided to say this and to write this to her. I said, as he was raised from the dead today, and he is alive, I want him to raise me with him today. So I felt inside me, you came to me, Jesus, and you told me, here are your two new lungs. So that's it. Today, I am healed because I'm, you are risen and I am, you are touching me to heal me and I will rise with you on Easter Sunday. I didn't take it lightly that she came to ask me. I felt this is a message from God that this is Easter Sunday. And then right after this, my numbers started to improve. All this, I, I, they started to come to me to encourage me. The staff, your numbers are well, you're picking up. And then one of the therapists for the, 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 the breathing therapist, he came and he was so kind and he was an older man. And he, I felt he was so like um, compassionate and, and he's caring about me, which, which wasn't with everyone, who, of, of course, everyone who was coming to my room, not everyone was that kind anyway. So he came and he said, um, you're such a lucky star. You are improving. When, I, when he said you're a lucky star, I said, oh, oh my God, he doesn't know you. So let me start to pray for this man. He's an older man and he's been in the hospital, at the same hospital for 33 years, very experienced, very nice. But when he said, you're a lucky star, I said, Lord, do you want me to stay here longer to pray for this guy? I will, but give me strength because on my own, I can't go again. I can't do it alone. And I was isolated, of course, you know, because of the coronavirus. So no visitors, nobody. So then I started to pray for him. A couple of days later, because he used to come to my room many times a day, 
and he speaks even if he like if he, he knows that he's not going to get any response from me other than nodding or smiling anything because i don't speak so he started to say i am here to help you but you know what you're improving because it's up to god his tone of like his way of thinking changed and what i did was pray i only pray because I'm not going to talk and I can't talk. And I'm not going to like try to tell them about Jesus in the middle of all this. But every time they say, how are you doing? I, I just point at heaven and, and, and show them like both hands like this praying. And in the meantime, my husband and my daughter were with them on the phone every day. And they told me when I came out that they used to tell them, we pray for you. We pray for the staff. Even when they tell them bad, like bad, like results or anything, or they tell them, oh, she, we tried this and she failed. And they tell them, that's okay, we're praying. God will help her. So they, so they used to come and tell me, you have such a good family. And your husband and daughter are so impressive because their language is, even if they get, even if they get like, like bad news, they receive it with grace. And they tell them about like Jesus and, and, and. so because of the, the coronavirus and the isolation, they had the privilege of having the iPad of the ICU iPad, and they had um, FaceTime with with the family. And then after Easter Sunday, um, the, the my husband said to me, they want to perform tracheostomy and this is where, where they are now because they can't put you on the ventilator anymore it's going to damage the, the the vocal cords it has like they have to do this but you have to tell them that you want it like you have to accept because they wouldn't perform any surgery without your consent and i said okay he said the, the surgeon will come on the iPad, FaceTime with me and my husband. And it will explain to both of us the procedure. And it's up to me. If I accept, they will do it. If I don't, they will leave me alone. But it's up to me. But he said to me, he explained. And then he said, it's reversible. Because I know people who had tracheostomy. So it wasn't a pleasant thing. But it was that morning, after the week after Easter, one day, that the surgeon explained everything to me. As he explained, I right away said to him, do it. He said, okay, the surgery is scheduled. It's going to be scheduled 5 a.m. tomorrow, like for tomorrow at 5 a.m. I said, okay. And then that same day that he explained, and I said, yes. I was on the phone, on the, on the iPad, FaceTime with my daughter and my husband. They called me every night and they, uh, they, they, we don't just talk, they pray. They pray with me and then they, they, uh, they have recorded prayers from all the groups to encourage me how people are praying for me and to lift me up. So that night, the same night the surgeon spoke with me, I told them, my heart is crying because of the tracheostomy. My heart is crying that I have to go through this. They said, don't worry, it's reversible. You were okay with it in the morning. I said to them, but I remembered one of our small group's members. She had a tracheostomy, but she had other problems. But I just remembered her because I used to see her. And she used to put her hand on the tracheostomy to speak or to put her hand on the tracheostomy to eat. I said, is this going to be my life, Lord? So I started to feel depressed or kind of down. And I started to say, there is, what can I do? And I, why did, I started to, to kind of cry, but inside me, they prayed with me and they said, no, rebuke the fear. And they prayed with me. So I, maybe from exhaustion, after I hung up with them, I slept. And then I saw this vision of, a soldier coming on a horse towards me and I he was wearing a navy uniform but he was from the Roman age 
So he was wearing the Roman soldier suit, but it wasn't metal. It was regular soldier suit. So I said to him, who are you? He said, I'm the commander of the army of God. I looked at him. He said, I have the five stones who David had to conquer Goliath. And here you go, take them. I took them and I understood that I will conquer Goliath. No Goliath will stand in my way. And I opened my eyes, the nurse was next to me. We will sedate you for the surgery. Are you ready? I said, yes, I am. And I felt peace. And I had the surgery, and since I had the tracheostomy, I started to improve tremendously. And the Lord showed me a vision, another one, the story of Paul and the boat and the, the, the ship. And he showed me the last part of it. He showed me the pieces of wood floating on the, on the water. And he started to tell me, I gave Paul the promise that everyone will be saved. No one will vanish. So what do you think? How were, were they saved? In the middle of this storm and agitated water and all these like, winds and everything. How were they saved? The Bible says that they were floating on the pieces of wood broken from the ship. He showed me these small, very small pieces, like they were really small. And I, he said to me, you think these pieces of wood saved them? I said, no, you saved them. He said, yes, but what did they do? I said to them, they surrendered. He said to me, surrender it all to me. I said, I am, I will. And it was instant, instant. And this is the answer to prayers. Because usually when you are struggling physically or emotionally, you don't, you hear God's voice and you say, I know, I know your voice and I know you and I love you and you love me and I know that you love me and I have the promises, but still this is hard. Um, so you struggle to, to, to just obey what he says to you. But in this, in this journey, I felt I was quick in everything. So I thank God and I, um, I just started to improve and, and, uh, Another very important thing that the social worker who was like, um, like taking care of my case, she was one of our Christian friends from church. She used to come, they didn't allow her in because of the coronavirus and she's not medical staff. She wanted to come in and, and see me, but they didn't allow her because of the gear. They want to save it for, for the, the, all the, the, the medical staff because they have to be fully dressed and covered from top to bottom and all the masks and the two masks on top of each other and a shield and, and like the cap, everything. So it's a hassle and a process to go in and out of my way. They take off everything in, in the waste basket before they go out. So they didn't allow her in. So she used to come from the window because it's all glass and, and tell me I'm praying for you and write a sign that even though I can't connect with you but I am praying and I am connecting with your husband and your daughter and we are on FaceTime and, and don't worry we are praying you are in good hands so she she was and she is very like she was with the hospital for a very long time so she was following my case of course and when the time came and like after Easter uh, they started like I started to improve to the extent that they decided to bring the physical therapist in to help me with my body that isn't moving and stiff and to start to give me those. So they felt I was now capable of enduring and they kept saying, we're amazed, we're amazed. And I kept inside me, whoever is a Christian and start to say, probably someone is praying for you, I would communicate with them and say yes. And this. But if they don't, I just let it go. And so I, they started the physiotherapy and they started to transfer me from the bed to a chair and it, it, things started to improve, improve, improve. And I kept telling him, thank you, 
as long as you're helping me and I'm being able to go on, I thank you. And of course, having my husband and my daughter every day at night, it was such a, like a, an encouragement. And then all of a sudden, I, one of the medical staff came with the, 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 the social worker, but they were standing outside of the door and she opened part of the sliding door and she said to me, congratulations, Mrs. Faragalla. I looked at her and as if I'm asking, why, what? She said, you're gonna be transferred from the ICU to the rehab center right away. And it's scheduled for Tuesday and it was two days away. I said, what? And I started to raise my hands, raise my hands. They said to me, you're almost dancing. I said, yes, because I felt this is such a positive step. But the enemy wouldn't let go. So she said, I found you a room. I found you a room in this, the, the, the best rehab center in, in the area. And we will transfer you there. And, and she called my husband and they were all rejoicing. And then right after she called my husband, a couple of hours later during that day, a surgeon, uh, uh, the, the GI doctor who can perform surgery, uh, called him up and said, uh, when things will be postponed, the enemy doesn't want to let go uh, because the, the feeding tube is in her nose and it's really annoying her with the breathing and it's not helpful. In her case, we have to take this out of her nose and put it in her stomach so she would breathe better and it will help her. So we will perform a surgery, but we don't have like the anesthesiologist is not ready, so we will have to schedule. So instead of her going Tuesday, we will postpone this because the doctor who is following, like, who is, like, like, her doctor at the hospital asked us to do this. So we will do that. And the surgery will be scheduled maybe Thursday or Friday. And then she will be moved to the, the rehab center later. We heard that and we started to pray. And the groups and all the prayer warriors and my sister was talking to everyone and with, she's with our group and with other groups and she's talking to a pastor in Uganda and everyone is praying and they kept confirming they had the vision that I stood up from the bed and walked and went out of the hospital. They had this vision confirmed through many people. So everyone was, was sure. And then the social worker intervened when she heard the news about the surgeon. She said to them, this room in the rehab center is nothing to play with because this is the best rehab center. If the room, if she doesn't go in that room on Tuesday, it's going to be taken and we're not going to be able to get her another one. So don't postpone for something that's not really needed in my opinion. She told them this, she was very brave and she really stood up for me. And she said to them, even if he wants to like this surgeon or her doctor want, want to do the, the surgery, you can do it there at the rehab center. So just let her go and then decide. They never did it. And I went on Tuesday, the scheduled time, April 29th. So I spent 36 days in the ICU. And when the nurses heard that I was being transferred from the ICU straight to the rehab center, they were saying this is unheard of because usually, the person has to be transferred from the ICU to a regular floor room and then later, and it's much later, like they, this is what they said. So I went to the rehab center and this is where God started to push me through my healing, full healing, that my oxygen level went to 98 and it was so good. And with very little help, they said, and I don't understand these numbers, but they said it was 50 liters capacity in the ICU room of, of pushing oxygen in my lungs. But here at the rehab center, it was two liters only. So the, the capacity of the, the oxygen they push in my body or in my lungs. So this means that all, I almost can breathe on my own, which was a huge step. And then when I went, they started to... Um, put the oxygen mask, which is great because they want me to, to start to be gradually improving. And then the doctor, when he saw that my numbers were good on, in, in, at the rehab center and the doctor got sent me a doctor who was great 
He was so compassionate and caring. He used to come every day and you can tell if someone is careless or caring and he was the one responsible for me and he used to come every day and he saw at this time, at this point, they allowed me to have my cell phone for the first time just a couple of days before I left the ICU. So I had my cell phone, I, I listened to worship music and, and all these things, and I used it to um, uh, have FaceTime with my family. So my husband sometimes was on FaceTime with me during the day. So as the doctor comes and sees him, he says to him, I want to give you the, the update and I can, can, can I talk to you every day to give you the update on her case or you would be, it would be too much for you? He said, no. So he was the one who wants to just help and, and, and encourage. And it was such a big difference when I went to the rehab and I felt I'm almost close to going home. I'm close to going home. And I, I felt so encouraged and happy. I started to be happy. Um, then it was time, uh, oh, I, I, they scheduled to remove the tracheostomy. So a day or two before removing the tracheostomy, I was in the room by myself listening to Hosanna and praising the Lord and trying to write down what are the points I have to highlight so I would be telling others about my experience in all this and telling them how Jesus was with me. And I started to write down the points and all of a sudden the tracheostomy got like disconnected, like it was open and the air started to come out of it. And I pressed the nurse's button, nobody comes. The ICU, if something is disconnected, the, 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 all the equipment start to like go off and it's such a noisy place and everybody like more than one person come to the room rushing but in this place the, yes the, the, the alarm is like the, the, the instruments are screaming but nobody's coming it's a, it's a regular room and, and they're not as alert and as on the case like the people who were in the ICU so I started to panic I'm losing my, my oxygen, I'm losing air instead of getting air in. And I started to panic and I said, I, I called 911 even though I know I'm not going to be able to answer. So I just called 911 for them to detect my, to, to know where I am and tell them to come and help me. The lady, call, the lady answers and said, where are you, where are you, where? And I couldn't answer. I hang up and call again because I, didn't, I was helpless. I was panicking and I felt it was an attack. So I said, Lord, you help me. Is this the end? I started to doubt. If the fear was overwhelming. And as I said this, the door was open and the guy came rushing and put it together and just tightened it. And I said to him, this is, I wrote down on my phone in the notes like to, to show him because I can't speak. I said to him, this is very dangerous. I was going to die. He said to me, Don, you know what? I, I want to tell you that the lady who was before you in that room, the same thing happened to her. But she got healed and she left. So I'm not going to tell you I'm superstitious, but I'm just telling you what happened. And I was the one who, who rescued her at the last minute. So I don't know. Maybe it's something with the room. I took it inside me and I felt, okay, the enemy wants to stand in my way for God's plan to be hindered and to be. So I said, Lord, please. That's the enemy. That's yeah. the enemy. Yes. Lord, please cover this room with your blood and I'm protected and nothing will happen. And I started to claim that I'm going to be okay until this is removed and I'm going to be fine. You will have, because I wrote down also to, 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 to the, the therapist, who came in and helped me, I wrote down to him, it can happen when I'm sleeping because I didn't even touch it and it opened by itself. So if, why, what, what if it happens when I'm sleeping and I'm trying to ring the, 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 the button for the nurses and nobody's coming. So I said to him, what would happen then? He said, it's not gonna happen. I tightened it very, very hard. And, but I didn't, I said, I am in your hands. Nothing will happen. And I prayed and I asked, I text my sister and the group, to pray and I asked for my protection and the day came and they removed it and everything went fine and then they um, uh, 
they started to see that I'm improving so much that they tested because I wasn't eating, I wasn't drinking water, I wasn't even, when I get, my mouth gets very dry and I say, I need a sip of water. They say, we can't, you're not allowed at all because they feel the, the, the clear water, if it goes in, it can, it, it can go in the lungs instead. And I'm not in a, the, the lungs are weak if someone, like, it's, I'm not a, in a normal like, um, situation. So they, this is the way it is, and I, I didn't, but they, they put some ice, chips of ice, and, but I wasn't eating, and then the, the speech therapist was scheduled to come, and she came, and she tested me for eating, and I ate, and I did well, and I, I passed the test, and then she had to have another test, and I passed the test, and then the day, like, the, 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 thera the, the physiotherapists were working also every day, were coming to, to train me and to give me exercises and to put me on the chair and try to, 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 to give me flexibility, to help me to have the flexibility more in my muscles because my body was all stiff. And I, 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 was, I fell from them once and they were terrified and they told my family anyway. So it wasn't an easy situation, but I was always focused on him. And this is what helped me to get through this. And then on Thursday, May 14th, the doctor came to me and said, you're improving so much, you don't need to be here anymore. I said to him, and I am with you, I want to go home. He said, yeah, you will go home soon, but the physiotherapists are saying that your body is very weak. They need to give you more exercises to just give you some strength in your body before you leave. I said, I said, okay. He said, I said to him, but you said that I, I, I'm going to be able to go home. So you are the one who can decide. He said, no, we're a team. And we have to all agree on this thing. I started to pray and to ask the prayer warriors to pray. On Friday morning, they disconnected the feeding too, and they gave me food. Like, and and they, they, they were doing this a couple of days prior to that. So it was just a total of two or two and a half days of eating there. So they, they, they still left the feeding tube inside my nose, but they disconnected it because they wanted to make sure that I don't need it anymore because it's so painful to put it in and out. So then another doctor who passed by my room to check on me before, and he wasn't that compassionate. That day he came in and he said, you're eating. And congratulations, you tested negative for COVID today, so you're healed. I said, thank you. So am I going to go home today? That's said, amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> he said, not today, but you're going home. I said, it's Friday, and I want to go home today, please. He said, but the physiotherapists are, say, the therapists are saying that you're very weak. You need more exercise. I said to him, excuse me, the physiotherapists work with me Monday to Friday for 15 to 20 minutes. And they are off Sunday and uh, Saturday and Sunday. Today is Friday. So for them to give me a session of 15 to 20 minutes today, I'm gonna, my going home is going to be postponed. And my doctor was insisting the, the, the doctor who was nice and who was following my case, like was on my case every day, he was saying that he doesn't want me to go out of the rehab for, for respiration to another rehab for physiotherapy because I might catch COVID again from someone there. So he said, I, am, I have to be home because it's safer for me to be home as long as there is someone to be with me or to take care of me. So I said to this doctor, I beg you, don't let me here. I am emotionally drained. I, I am out of my home for two months, not seeing anybody. I see medical staff only, he said to me, and you don't even see them because they're covered top to bottom and just the eyes, even if you see the eyes, I'm not sure. I said to him, yes, and I want to go home. And it's better for me and I will improve physically when I go home. He said to me, do you have anybody at home with you? I said, I have family. I have a big family and I have my husband, my daughter, my mom, my sister. I have a lot of family to help me and they, they're going to be there for me. Please take me out of here. And again, 
we, I prayed on the phone with a group of prayer warriors because now I have my voice back after they removed the tracheostomy. So they were praying and pushing with me for me to go home that day. I told them, I am asking specifically from the Lord and he will not, like, I will get this, this prayer answered because he knows how I am desperate to go home and be with my family. And I kept begging the Lord. And I kept asking him and saying, today, I was insisting on that day. And an hour later, or maybe less, the doctor came in and said, we signed your release paper. You're out. You're going to be out today. And I came home, and I came home on a stretcher. But I was so, I, I was the happiest person. Because now, again, I am with my family, surrounded with them. I feel so much better. I am with them. And I, I don't care. I know the Lord healed me. And he will, this physical thing of moving, is going to happen. Because he, his miracle is complete. He gave me new lungs. What? Like, this is the most important thing. New lungs. And this is what prayer warriors were asking for no lungs and he kept he kept me saying i didn't lose my mind i didn't i didn't lose any like he said to me as the three men went in the furnace and they were not burned and i was jesus was with them in the old days i will be with you and the same you will come out of it having nothing touched like nothing you will not be affected at all and i see that and today I am 30 days, today is the 16th, I am a month out of the hospital, the improvement is huge. I was on a wheelchair, then using the walker, I don't use these two anymore, I'm using a cane on and off. I walk around the house by myself when I can, and I can stand now, before that if I, if I try to, I couldn't lift up my body from any chair or any bed or anything. So praise God, he did it from A to Z. He did it. And I believe he, he will continue to strengthen me and to use me with others to tell him about him. I used to tell them about him, but now it's more touching because it's, it's something... It's personal. It's personal now. Personal. And so many people are scared of this coronavirus and, and it's real for everyone around the world. Yes. So, Praise God. Yes, and, and so many people have gotten it, but praise God for the ones that believed and God healed them. And what a beautiful story you have. Praise God. God is good. He is always good to all of us. Well, I thank you for your story. Um, and um, we, we will be sure to sh spread this story around. And, uh, you know, God bless you for all he has done and God bless you for your journey ahead because you're going to be a prayer warrior for someone who needs you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much.